Okay, hi everyone. Um, good afternoon. Thanks everybody for tuning in today for today's webinar from Pathwaves on neuroplasticity and what it means. Today's webinar is being brought to you by Pathwaves, a Miami-based digital therapeutics company specializing in neuroempowerment, which is a proprietary, multidimensional, and transformative methodology that uses powerful principles of neuroplasticity, neurotechnology, therapy, and coaching to help individuals attain their optimal state of mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical harmony. Through the Pathways Protocol, they can help create intentional outcomes and take control by forming new empowered patterns that transform your life. They have spent over a decade fine-tuning how to use your own synapses to improve performance and end suffering from conditions such as depression and anxiety, sleep issues, post-traumatic stress disorder, and addiction. Pathways is the realization of nearly a decade spent mapping, studying, and balancing brainwave activity by founder G. Cole. And so G. Cole today is going to be our host for this webinar um, and is going to be leading this discussion on neuroplasticity and what it means. He has more than 16,000 sessions and over a million minutes of brainwave recordings to his credit. Um, and is considered one of the world's most foremost brainwave experts. He's also the creator of neuroempowerment, the pioneering science at Pathways that balances the brain and body. Um, so, um, so now without any further ado, um, we'll go ahead and um, we will go ahead and get this kicked off and started. And um, if everyone could um, just please keep yourself on mute during the webinar presentation and that uh, whenever we wrap up, we'll open it up to questions. Um, we're gonna try to keep this very concise so that we can keep everyone on their lunch break and um, get everyone back to work here shortly. Okay, so let's go ahead without further ado. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Our first one, webinars in um, neuroplasticity. So this first one is really about neuro neuroplasticity as it relates to our nervous system. It's really about our ever-changing nervous system. So let me start with uh, what does the word neuroplasticity mean? So neuro is a prefix meaning of or about neurons. And neurons are nerve cells that generate electrical signals. So they make up all of our nervous systems and all of our nerves. Plasticity means changeable. So neuroplasticity means that our nervous systems are changeable. So when you put them together, that's uh, all, what it's all about. And actually, it's really important to know that our nervous systems are always changing. So that can be good and can be bad. You know, neuroplasticity basically just describes the constant change our nervous system is doing. So if we're doing bad things over and over again, then our nervous system will want to do that thing that is bad. When I say bad, I just mean bad for us. And then there's the good side, which means we can change it. So neuroplasticity is just as responsible for the negative in our lives as it is for the positive. And it can be in our way as much as it helps us. The reality is, is that without intervention, your past, and your everyday life are the only sources of conditioning the different processes of neuroplasticity. So the one constant in neuroplasticity is change. As we grow, so does our nervous system. Our nervous system is adding nerves every day. Our neuroplasticity also gets rid of the nerves that we do not use for a long period of time. Some say it's like 20 years. So we're always adding new nerves for whatever's happening each day, and if we don't use those, then we're gonna lose them. So just remember, practice makes permanent. The nervous systems may have many different nervous systems that make up everything that we function and happen the way they're supposed to. Our bodies are made up of interdependent oscillating networks. So what I'm saying is that the systems of the body for example, muscular, skeletal, and digestive. There's 11 or 12 of these systems, depending on who you ask. I like to say 12. So all these systems are dependent on each other and adjust each other on an ongoing basis. 
and each system has its own nervous system. And these systems are keeping track of what's happening, and they help us grow, develop, change, and heal. So it's just important to know that since we're always changing, that we're able to adapt and do new things, and that's what neuroplasticity is really all about. It's also really important to remember that you cannot do something unless your nerves know how. So if we haven't developed the nerves, and fortunately we have something called mirror neurons. So if we see something, it gives us a chance to start to create the nerves we need. So that way when we start to try to do it, it'll be a lot easier for us. But the reality is, is that if we haven't tried it or practiced it, then we can't do it. So there's those people that when you say, hey, just calm down, they say, I can't. But the reality is they don't have the nerves to let them. Another great example is meditation. You know, the ability to meditate has to be learned and practiced. So our nervous system has the wiring to allow us to meditate. Our nerves, our minds, and bodies develop based on how we live. So, for example, if we work out one arm all the time, the other arm is going to have a lot less muscle, like this guy in the picture. So, in case you missed it, every day is training day. Whether we know it or not, as often the case, how we think, behave, and function each day is training our nervous system for how it will function automatically. In other words, if you practice something long enough, it will then become part of your automatic function, which means your body will automatically function in order to perform whatever you have been practicing without us even intentionally thinking about it. What this really also means is that when we're doing something or practicing it every day, the nervous systems of our lungs and our stomach and our digestive system, muscular and skeletal, all the systems have to keep wiring and adding nerves. And that happens at different speeds. So if we keep practicing, they'll get more and more in conformity and happen on a very you know, more flowing level. And so at Pathways, we facilitate and help you accelerate those changes and help you make them sustain. For me, it's all about thriving. So unless you, you intentionally change it, your nervous system's primary goal is to survive. So learning how to intentionally take charge or influence the process called neuroplasticity is imperative if you, if you want to thrive instead of just getting by in survival. You know, like, hey, you're there, baby. I do not want to be at the mercy of my own survival instincts any longer. I want to thrive. So if you agree with me, then go to our website and check out how we help people do that on a daily basis. So in summary, neuroplasticity is the science of how our nervous system makes change. How you live each and every day has a direct effect on how your nervous system functions. If you want to improve how you're functioning or living your life, neuroplasticity means that you can. With today's technology and the awareness of 2020, it's easier than ever before. So if you want to stop just surviving and begin thriving, now is the time. If you want to know more about how to tap into your neuroplasticity and what it means to you, visit pathwayslife.com and click on the schedule a free call button for your free consultation. I really want to thank you for spending your life, your lunchtime with us. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy talking about you know, what we do in neuroplasticity and how to live our lives better. So I just really want to thank you for tuning into our webinar today. And uh, I just want you to remember that we've cracked the code to a more conscious you. So I want to open it up for questions. Jennifer, we have any questions? That was great. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, actually, I have a few questions here um, to go over. So um, we got a question here. I thought neurons were only in the brain, but you're saying they're all over the body. Can you tell us a little more about that? Uh, sure. The uh, neuron is another word for a nerve cell. And so there are neurons in all of our nervous systems all over our whole body. So uh, it's not, you know, just a lot of people think the neuroplasticity just happens in the brain. And actually, medically, 
you know, they say that that's only happening in the brain. When they refer to how our nerves and our bodies change, they have other terminology for that. So um, neurons are in every nervous or every nerve is a uh, nerve has neurons in it. So. Okay, great. Thank you. I hope that answers the question. Um, next question here is, does meditation help us reprogram ourselves? So yes, uh, it does. Uh, it has a limited ability depending, it really depends on how you meditate and really you know, what you mean by meditation. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we look at meditation as trying to reduce numbers of thoughts or just having peace, we're actually creating the nerves to be able to do that. Um, if we are using meditation to visualize passing a test, the studies show that whenever students do that, more, a higher percentage of the students pass the test. So meditation can help in a lot of ways. Uh, it's one of the things that we teach at Pathways is really how to use meditation to entrain your nervous system, which is tapping into this natural process of neuroplasticity. And so once you learn how to do that, you can facilitate improving your life a lot faster and be in more control of that. And that's all about learning how to meditate in different ways to benefit yourself more. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, let us know if that, if that answered your question. I, I think that that was pretty comprehensive. Um, okay, how long does it take for something to become automatic? So well, that really uh, varies with, you know, the nervous system that we're talking about. So, I mean, the digestive system is going to take a little longer than the respiratory system. And it also depends on the person. So um, it's not, you know, not easy to say. Some people say it takes 30 days to break a habit. Some people say 60 days to break a habit. Some people say 90 days. Uh, it really depends on exactly what we're talking about. Um, however, you know, there's a, a breathing technique that I've talked about on other webinars that can really start to change how your autonomic nervous system works um, when you do that exercise. And so that can actually start to kick in in one or two days. So yeah, that's a, that, that question can't be easily answered. It's really dependent on very specific circumstances uh, towards, you know, what you're talking about. Yeah, and I think that that makes sense. Would you, can you give us maybe an example of like what would be a, what would be like a specific circumstance and an example that, that you've seen maybe? Well, um, an example like, you know, I had a friend of mine who uh, used to play tennis with her right arm and uh, she fell and uh, had a separation of her shoulder and had to learn how to play with her left arm. And it took her about six months to be able to do that. Uh, but things that are like a little easier, more of the mental things, um, you can entrain uh, in your nervous system a trigger to calm yourself down. And uh, so if you were to practice that breathing technique I was talking about earlier, every morning and every night for uh, three to five days, it would automatically start to affect your autonomic nervous system when you started it. So uh, I hope those are good examples. You need to get deeper. I can. So. Uh, yeah. No. I think that that I think that that makes sense. That's great. Thank you. Uh, is neuroplasticity affected by age at all? Uh, it depends on how we age. <laughs> mm. um, so if we, you know, a lot of those systems out there talk about you know training your brain and you know, keeping active, um, then, you know, if you stay active, then, and you've also spent your life in doing a lot of learning, um, and a lot of changing of your environment with a lot, without that stressing you, or if you did have stress and anxiety from the changes, uh, learning how to reconcile that, and then, you know, kind of create ongoing flow, which is what we teach here at, at that way. Um, then your ability to continually learn and add on will just keep going. Um, you know, they, they've studied Einstein and, you know, Einstein's brain was pretty much as active in, in his last years as it was uh, you know, 20 years before that. So, uh, the studies show that you can really entrain your neuroplasticity 
to keep going strong. However, it is definitely a lot more active, you know, in utero and at birth and the first seven to eight years of the life. So, um, you know, it, it definitely does wane a little bit. However, you can always tap into it. You can always improve it. Uh, it's really about how you handle it, how you, how you use it. Oh, it's interesting. So in order for, um, I guess, to kind of combat that like waning as you get older, is it, it really kind of makes the practice necessary and, and really kind of using it then? Right. And that's kind of the reason why a lot of people when they retire decline very quickly in their health and their abilities to, to, to live their life because they were so active at work and then they stopped being so active mentally. This is all about, um, you know, the mental functioning on a daily basis and learning new things and exercising what you do know. Uh, and studies uh, have shown that those who travel a lot and are, are you know, visiting all sorts of areas uh, are, are really soaking in the new environment a lot, which really activates and keeps the neuroplasticity part of their lives really, really, you know, primed and, and functional. So that helps a lot too. That's awesome. Okay. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to use my next travel and vacation. Um, <laughs> right. it's, it's to help your neuroplasticity. It's definitely for good health all around. Improving my health. Okay. Um, so I guess this, uh, this, another question we have here about um, age again, too, you touched on this a little bit at what age or stage of development does neuroplasticity begin? Oh, it starts in utero. That's where it starts. And uh, when we do the mind mapping here and the neuropath quant, we identify if there are any issues in the pregnancy. So before we were born that have been affecting uh, us for the rest of our lives, that's the core of our nervous system that everything else grows from. And so, yeah, it starts in utero and we can see that when we do the initial mappings of the neural activity from your brain when you come into pathways. So. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, and then we just have one, uh, one more question here. Um, someone asking, what role does sleep play with neuroplasticity? Oh, wow, that's a kind of a big question. It's a oh, huge okay. part <laughs> of neuroplasticity. So, uh, you know, actually the, uh, and we talk about this and I'll be talking about it more in later, uh, you know, versions, I mean, letter, sorry, letter webinars that we do, that uh, when we sleep and we go from awake into the REM stage, which is rapid eye movement, and that's also the dreaming state, which is when we are in our mental reconciling our lives so that our body understands what adjustments it's going to need to make to support whatever our understanding of our lives are. Does that make sense? Did I, did I lose you on that? No, that, that does make sense. And so I guess this just kind of goes to reinforce why um, it's so important that you get that good night's sleep and those, you know, six to eight hours every evening. Right, right. So after you go through the REM and you figure out, you know, you're, you're trying to, you're unconscious and subconscious are trying to figure out like the conversation or the, what you learned in class yesterday, how your stomach and your lungs and all the systems of your body have to adjust to support the new knowledge or the new way of living. So sleep is coordinating all of that. And you know, they don't really call the changing of the body neuroplasticity. I do, because it's you know, really neuroplasticity. Uh, they call it the generation and maintenance and, and regeneration of your nervous system. And so that the majority of that is happening while you sleep, which is why if you're sick or you get hurt, you know, one of the first things they say is drink a lot of liquid so you get a lot of flow and get a lot of sleep. And uh, that's where the most of that's going to, the healing and the, the generation, regeneration of your nervous system is going to happen. Okay, great. Okay, so if we have time, just one more question. Um, what ways can you help a person who found out they had a learning disability late in life, dyslexia and vision impairment, um, but not due to the disability where you see words, sentences, structures backwards, things like that. So the process is at pathways. When we're working with a person's neuroplasticity is we help your nervous system have a, almost a mirror, a gauge, a, 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 a process that it gets to, you know, 
work with to create the optimal homeostasis, so the optimal levels of interaction of all of your nervous systems so that we can help your body heal itself faster than anything. However, if you know, your body got there in the first place, it may not know how to heal itself. So what we do is in our process, help you go through exercises that are specific while you're with the neurotechnology to help your systems get into its healthiest state and then adjust in accordance with the activity that you're doing. So we're tapping into that neuroplasticity and then we're enhancing it. And because we're using the, the neurotechnology, we're gonna speed up how fast you can build the nerves that are gonna correct those issues so that it'll happen 10 to 100 times faster than you can do it on your own. So that's what we do here, that's one of the things we do here at Neuro, uh, sorry, at Pathways. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. I th and, and specifically as it relates to something um, like dyslexia, um, the neuro empowerment process can help with that? Yes. So the visual cortex is the occipital lobe. So what we do is exercises on the occipital lobe and actually put, you know, wording and, and things on the screen so that you can work through your dyslexia. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a big issue with uh, dyslexia specifically because, you know, Einstein had it and a lot of the, a lot of the most famous, smartest people that have uh, ever graced the earth that we're aware of had it. I've, I've uh, you know, I've dealt with it and, um, you know, to me, dyslexia, you know, is something you just have to kind of learn how to handle. But as we do it, we can also help your nervous system stop doing it. Uh, it's really a processing of what you're seeing visually in your occipital lobe. And so we map that and then help you um, basically refurbish how it's functioning. Okay, that's great. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we're, we're coming up at the end of the half hour. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. But if anyone else um, has any other questions, um, you can please um, shoot us an email um, and, and or we will uh, give us a call and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, we're going to be doing a whole series on neuroplasticity. This is the first of five. So our ne we're going to do a next, our next one will be every, so every Wednesday at noon for the next four weeks, we'll be uh, hosting these with Jeff and he'll be giving us just these quick little uh, lunchtime, you know, kind of tidbits on, on how we can use neuroplasticity to um, overcome just some, some everyday things. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about neuroplasticity and anxiety and stress which I'm sure uh, we're all quite curious to, to hear more about um, how those two things affect each other and what we can do about that. Um, with that said, is there anything else you'd like to add, Jeff, before we close it out? I just really appreciate everybody joining us. And, uh, you know, let's uh, tap into our neuroplasticity so that we can thrive together and enjoy living. So thanks for joining us. Okay, great. Great. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful day today.